Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late for those of you who are joining us right on time. I had to shut down my computer, and that took at least five minutes, maybe six. Anyway, here we are. Welcome. Hopefully, my internet is connection is okay. I'm not quite sure why it's struggling so much, um, and my computer is struggling, but hopefully now that we're here and in, it will work well. Today, we are going to talk about the benefits of sunshine. Um, now, I want to, again, just like last week, I am not an expert in this. I'm not a physicist. I took a physics class in college. Um, I have just studied and observed and listened to very smart people. Um, so this is another, I will, I will give a, a brief synopsis um, or some ideas which you could take and just use as how to practically help and use sunshine to help your health. But um, I also will give you some names and different resources to start diving in on your own if you like doing deeper research or are really interested in a particular um, part or subject of this. Um, all the things that we're talking about today, I have heard and listened and studied in great detail at some time, um, but in in uh, for the sake of brevity, um, for the sake of my own brevity of putting together research for this short little um, uh, video, I am just presenting um, kind of the top level information, but know that there is a lot of deeper information under this, which is really cool to explore. Grab my water here. So... Glad that you are here to join us. I'm here at the office again today and I'm excited to be talking about this. Um, if you are new to YouTube Live, welcome. Thanks for visiting. Um, thanks for of those of you that are watching me live. Um, you are welcome to be in the live chat. So if you go to the buttons underneath the video that says things like save or uh, share those buttons, there should be one that says chat. And you can click on that and comment a question or comment that will show up in the chat that happens during this video. Um, so I can answer questions, um, read aloud comments while we're going. It doesn't seem that that live chat is being saved, so I try to read them out loud. And then um, if you're watching this on replay, thank you for watching the replay, go ahead and put any question in the comments below and I will um, see that notification um, at some point and answer your question, hopefully within a couple of days of you asking it. All right, so let's get started. Um, the first thing I want to do is run down a list of things that the sun does for us. Um, the, the things that we're going to discuss today. So there are six categories of benefits that the sun gives to us. And these are the six that we're going to talk about today. Category number one is energy. The sun helps our bodies, our cells have and store energy, which is super cool. Number two, it helps regulate our circadian rhythm and thus our hormone system. That's super helpful. Uh, number three, vitamin D levels are increased in the sun. That's what most of us know about. Ooh, excuse me. I haven't yawned today. I don't know why I'm yawning now. Maybe I need to breathe more. Okay, um, vitamin D levels are important for immunity, for bone health, for mood, for um, immunity again, which is inflammation control and things like that. Number four, detoxification. The sun helps us to detox. Um, this can be too strong for some people and beautiful and can't get enough of for other people. But we're gonna talk about a little bit about why that happens um, and and how to do it safely. Number five, um, it helps our mood. So this ties a little bit into that circadian rhythm, but there are mood boosting things, which number six, I gave a category, which maybe is the same, which um, is opiate production. Your body interaction, your body's interaction with sunlight produces opiates in your body to give um, happiness and, and pleasure and enjoyment. So that's super helpful for us. We are made to be happy and content creatures. Um, when we're not, something is wrong, off, imbalanced, painful, broken, um, congested, different, different words like that. So it um, is nice when our sunshine gives us part of what is correct for us to feel. So, all right. 
Let's dive into each of these. Number one, let's talk about increased energy. So I am not a physics major. I am not a physicist. I have listened to very smart people who are and have known um, physicists who have said offhand things like, yes, of course, sunlight is full of tons of microparticles, um, many of which penetrate our skin, which is true, but I never would have known to look up that fact if I didn't know some very smart, fun people. Um, so that is um, where we're going to kind of briefly do this. Probably is the, in some ways, briefest oversight and in some ways not. Um, my, I got to get out my favorite book. Well, one of my favorite books. Um, the Fourth Phase of Water by Jared Pollock. <clears throat> this is a great book by, I'm pretty sure he's a physicist. He studies physics for sure. He studied water for a lot of years. And he wrote this very nice, beautiful book. Um, it's actually quite easy to read and quite, um, I don't know, user user friendly. Good spacing, good pictures, some funny pictures or helpful diagrams. So I really like it. The section that I am pulling from today um, is about, um, it's a little under halfway through the book and it builds on a lot of things that come before, which is exploring the, the structure or phase of water. Um, he calls easy or exclusion zone water. Fourth phase of water is another name for it. Um, structured water is another name for it. Um, it is this gelatinous like substance of structure. Um, I should have thought about this. So um, here is the, uh, the water structuring. So as the water structures in it, this helix model, helix maybe is the right word, um, it's a hexagonal shape. And then that hexagonal shape can actually lead to multiple structures that actually look like this. Um, you can make this structure water, our body makes it, it's inside of our cells. Um, you can make the structured water by taking certain metallic um, linings um, into a beaker of water. <clears throat> you add, add some kind of energy, like electricity or radiant sunlight, hint, hint, where we're going with this. And the movement of the water, the, the structuring of the water eventually creates a current. So there is a theory which I feel like is, it makes very sense in the physiological world. Um, there's a theory that the capillary action of our blood vessels, especially our tiny ones, that movement of blood through that is due in large part to the structuring of water effect. Um, Dr. Tom Cowan talks a lot about structured, this easy, the fourth phase of water in his book, Cancer and the New, mm, sorry, Water and the New Biology of Cancer. And um, this is talking about structured water because what's really cool with this structure, I lost my page here. What's cool with this structure of water is when it's structured, it excludes things. That's why it's called an exclusion zone. So everything in this zone um, becomes, so here is one that they show. Here's a tube. I'm sorry for this. I don't have screen share on this computer, so um, hopefully you can see it okay. So there is a metal that they have this tube is made of, and then the structure is the easy layer, and then the extra protons are pushed to the middle, and this creates a net negative for the EZ zone and the net positive for the water with a few extra protons in it, which is actually what creates a current and it will current through um, these tubes. So it's pretty cool. And then it excludes things. So jumping ahead to the detoxing, one of the ways that the sun detoxes our body is because it stimulates a structuring of the water in our cells, which naturally excludes things out of that structure. Um, they can't be there because they are in the way of the structure. So a, a purely structured water um, will have none of that. Oh, man, I can't believe I lost it. Sorry, guys. Um, a structured water will have none of that, um, none, none, no junk in it. And when there's no junk in it, that is really helpful um, to having clean detox cells. Okay. So when we have this helix molecule built into a structure layer and layer and layer, 
Um, there's different positive charges here that are listed, but there's nothing present in this structure. Okay. I love geeking out about water. I never thought water would be such a cool thing, but it totally is. Okay, so when we have sunlight coming into the body, it actually works to begin structuring the water in our cells. It will stimulate capillary flow, which is going to increase blood flow, which we all know is good for removing toxins and getting healing nutrients to the places in our body that need it. So that is the why. That is the why of why sunlight is helpful to your body. It brings energy. Also, fun fact, water stores energy, right? How do I know that this is possible? Because you can heat water up and it stays hot for a while, right? It eventually loses its energy, but that, that happens with everything. That's, um, that's a property of matter, right? But um, we can retain energy in water. So when your body is charged, if you will, by the sun, radiant energy exposed by sunlight, or ultraviolet light or infrared light, right? That's why we have the internal infrared um, sauna lights and things like that. It actually charges your body um, with energy. Um, so both structures detoxes and recharges and holds energy for later for a period of time, um, energy um, in the structured water in our body. So, so cool. Uh, what else? Um, oh, I was reading, uh, just as I was reading through, uh, one of the things that they suggested was, yeah, water, sorry, sunlight goes through our skin, right? Because we think of, we hear about vitamin D all the time. So we think about UV light hits my skin and that's what causes vitamin D production. So that's why I feel good. Uh, there, there's so many more things to sunlight exposure than that. And if you think about taking an ordinary flashlight, and putting it on one side of your hand, you're going to get light shining through to the other side, right? Not light that's bright enough to see anything by, but it, it is clearly coming through. It's not stopped by your light or you would see darkness, right? If it blocked it, you would see nothing on the palm if you had your flashlight on the back of your hand. So light goes through our bodies. Um, light and other microparticles will penetrate into our, our skin, to our organs, and to other parts of our body. That also means that they're going to penetrate through clothing, which is great news because some of us live in places where winter is a season and we can't get very much sunlight exposure in the winter um, because or on our bare skin, um, which does hinder some of our effect of vitamin D, which will affect hormone balance and mood and things like that. But the good news is we actually can get a, a benefit um, even with clothes on. I'm curious and I have not seen anything, um, so you guys can let me know if you know. Um, it will be something that I will look up someday um, or ask someone someday. Is natural fibers or plastics, like how inhibited is the sun by clothing um, and what type of fiber of clothing? Do we need to be wearing cotton and wool um, to have that sunlight penetrate well? Um, our plastic, like I have a plastic shirt on today. This is a synthetic material, probably 98 to 100 percent. It does not breathe. It is plastic um, weaved together in a certain way. This maybe doesn't allow as much uh, interaction between. Um, it's potentially stopped by the sunlight particles much more than a natural fiber would. There are still holes in the shirt right between the weaving. So there's going to be some amount. We know this because you can be outside all day with a shirt on and still get potentially sunburned, right? Depending on what your skin looks like. So um, we know that clothing doesn't block sunlight either, but certain clothing blocks it more than others for sure. And then thickness and depth does. So some parts of the sunlight, like the UV may be blocked by clothes, but is the sunlight itself. So we have, most of us in our houses have modern windows that have UV blocking in the windows. Number one, that's because people got tired of their furniture fading. Number two, it's very interesting to note, is that actually a good idea? Because the UV coming into our house is helpful for clearing our skin. Like we put babies in the sunlight for jaundice treatment, right? We need the UV to break up and um, metabolize the, the bilirubin that creates that jaundice yellow color for newborns. So if you have a UV light blocking windows 
um, the light comes through, other particles are come through, but that UV is not coming through, which means, yes, your furniture won't fade, but also you're not getting the benefit of UV lights when you're in your house and you're only getting them outside. So that may or may not be actually something helpful. You might want that UV light. So it's an interesting thought um, to consider. Okay. UV light, penetrating skin. So a couple experiments you can do at home or do with your kids, which are super fun, would be to look at the properties of light. Remember that science is reproducible and, and to some level, all experiments or all study can be done by you in your house or your backyard um, with simple tools. So we have gotten into a place where we've been taught that science is done by experts in the lab. Um, where really science has always been something observed by people in nature. And then very smart people um, made that their life study um, and studied certain aspects of science and of the natural world. But they all did experiments that are very, very simple to do. Um, I This book even, this, this water, fourth phase of water book, has quite a few things like the flashlight that you can go in just to observe scientifically right? Observation, reproducible observational um, data. You can show that light travels through our palm because you can see it on, you can see it through on the other side. Some of it's blocked, some of it gets through. Um, same with UV. We know that it works. There's testing for it, right? So we have all that. All right. I will not labor that point anymore. As things get into our skin, I don't know oh, if natural fibers. Sorry. I need to breathe more. I don't know if natural fibers are going to be um, helpful um, or if it's more the layer number, right? How thick is your layers? So a warm winter coat is going to block quite a few, um, if not all of the sun rays, at least some frequency. I'm sure other frequencies just go right through us um, and never get hindered at all. So there's so much to sunlight and the amount of particles and the wavelength of particles of sun um, that we, people know, I don't know. I don't know, I did not study that. Okay, speaking of sunlight and sunlight affecting us, we also can have an effect to um, our eyes. So when we look at the sun, don't look directly at the sun, but when we're in sunlight, um, we without a block. So here comes in our UV blocking sunglasses. The problem with UV blocking sunglasses is it does not allow sunlight to get into your eyes. And that does two things. Number one, sunlight directly on your skin helps the cells in your skin or in your eyes to detoxify. This is good. Um, it also helps us to produce melatonin. I will link this article that I found as I was doing some like, wrap up research for this talk class. But here is the, the picture, the graphic um, that I printed out really quick. Um, it's pretty cool, but it's talking about sunlight. Um, getting sunlight through your skin and your eyes produces or, or creates a um, melatonin response of the body. So melatonin is first made in the morning in the brain and the eye. What is melatonin good for? Number one, we know melatonin helps us sleep, right? But number two, did you know that melatonin helps us to heal? It's an antioxidant. What's really interesting, I never heard it called that, but it makes perfect sense to me because antioxidants, I'm sorry, melatonin is in contrast and balance to cortisol. What does cortisol do? It causes inflammation and, and alertness, right? Alert, um, fix something, look at something. Um, it's a very stressful process to the body. So if you have a lot of cortisol, you're going to do some damage to your cells. Just enough cortisol. Cortisol is good. Um, just enough cortisol will make us alert and paying attention to our world and ready to react and, and all of that. Um, so we get a cortisol hit in the morning when we first get up. And then it's going to kind of decrease over the day as our alertness and awakeness is less needed. I'm not breathing well today. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, and then we will have the melatonin kick in. So then the melatonin is going to spike in the evening and bring about rest and sleep. Melatonin is released when the light is absent or in the darkness. Um, so that switch um, we're going to have it at dark. We usually two hours after the sun goes down is when melatonin is produced. 
Uh, this is why people who have difficulty sleeping, I recommend, I didn't make it up. Um, the recommendation is to watch the sunrise if possible and the sunset. Because if you watch the sunset and then go inside and only use red, um, red and yellow lights. So really being off your phone, off the computer, or using those blue light blocking glasses, the yellow glasses that you see people wear sometimes, um, or you've seen around those block the rays that say, it's awake, it's awake, we're awake, let's go. Um, if you use the, the blue light blocking glasses and you, um, especially after dark, so that you stay in that mode of firelight and lamplight and candlelight. Um, those are all red spectrum lights. That keeps your body in the melatonin production place. So then you're going to be able to sleep overnight. So melatonin controls the DNA of the mitochondria, which is cool. Um, it helps trigger apoptosis and autophagy, which is autophagy. I don't know, which is cell um, recycling, right? New cells. Um, and then apoptosis is when unhealthy cells are told to kill themselves, right? To be done, um, to recycle themselves. Um, and then there's a, a nuclear G genome, a nuclear genome that melatonin also turns off um, when we're in a high enough energy structure. And that leads to a lot of healing not disease, healthy cells, healthy cycle, and a healthy, healthy body, right? Which is pretty great. Okay. That is good. So circadian rhythm can be regulated. And that's why a lot of people, when they go camping, if you just camp, not bring modern life to camping, right? But just camp. When you camp, you're going to get... Um, a lot of people find themselves able to sleep much better and on a regular cycle. There's probably lots of reasons for that. You're more tired because you were working and not just sitting at an office chair all day. Um, or you were able to be rest and not stressed. You're not, you're in a place of relaxation and fun. Um, you maybe slam in some natural waters. You were probably in the sun a little bit more and all that. You were maybe grounding, sitting on the ground. It's pretty hard not to touch the ground when you're camping, right? Um, in our modern world, we can avoid ground touching very easily. Um, but in camping, uh, you can, but it's uh, you're just more connected to nature and the ground when you're out camping. So this really helps. And they say if you go camping for a week, it will reset your circadian rhythm, no matter how bad your sleep problems are. You obviously have to not use your phone, um, you know, use lamplight and firelight and lantern and all of that. But pretty cool. Okay. Point number two, increase vitamin D levels. Hooray. Also, there's a caution. So why is it hooray? We need vitamin D um, to absorb calcium, to pull calcium into the bloodstream from the gut. The problem is calcium is pulled by vitamin D no matter where it's coming from. So here's the little bit of a caution. If you have a lot of sun exposure, you may feel sunsick, right? That's a... Just, you just feel kind of crappy. Um, you have maybe a little bit of twitchy muscles that night. Um, you might get a little headache or just feel a little bleh. That is all calcium tissue deficiency. So if you didn't eat mm, some amazing raw milk or, for, or cultured uh, dairy product, um, the whole time you were outside, which you probably didn't, um, you are probably not going to have enough calcium in the gut for all of your vitamin D in your bloodstream to attract. So instead, the vitamin D in your bloodstream attack, attracts calcium from your bones and your teeth, potentially. Um, that is going to pull all, and, the, and your muscle tissue. So that's going to pull it from your tissue, the calcium, into your bloodstream because that's what vitamin D does pulls calcium into the bloodstream. So if that happens, we actually can get leg cramps and restless leg. We can get, uh, it's a vulnerability to infection when we have that. Um, so we often see um, some quote poolside diseases like 
um, HPV, polio. Um, there are quite a few diseases, canker sores. A lot of people get a canker sore or a shingles outbreak will happen. So these are all viruses that were allowed to reproduce because the calcium got pulled into the bloodstream by all the vitamin D from the sun. So while vitamin D is very, very helpful to the immune system, we have to be aware that we have enough vitamin F um, to put it back in. Vitamin F puts it back in the tissue. So vitamin F is also called linoleic acid. And it's discovered by multiple people. So um, vitamin F is what I refer to it a lot of because that's where most of my education about this topic came from was Dr. Royal Lee's work. Um, but to vitamin F, there's a ton in this book, Vitamin News, um, and lots of other books that um, are published of his work. Vitamin F or linoleic acid, you can look it up. It's a fatty acid. Um, you can find it in a lot of things. The common things that we can get it from are Cataplex F from Standard Presses and um, fermented cod liver oil with the concentrated butter oil specifically is what has that vitamin F. Also eating a lot of fat. So this is why I think eating a high fat diet, which I recommend, um, is very protective of sunburns. Uh, one of the reasons is because that, that all of the different fatty acids help protect the skin, but they also help keep the calcium where it needs to go uh, in the tissue, which means that the immune system will be more balanced. Um, because ultimately the immune system is what keeps our cells healthy, away from cancerous, all that kind of thing. All right. So we can get a lot and a lot and a lot of vitamin D levels, which women especially and men are told to take high levels of vitamin D. Um, what happens is we actually can sometimes get uh, uh, um, the opposite effect of what we're going for. People will actually get osteoporosis um, or other um, hormone imbalances. Vitamin D acts basically like a hormone. It's a very interesting vitamin where it is something we can eat, but we also make it. Uh, and it interacts with many of our glands and, and endocrine system as a hormone. So it's, it's an anomaly kind of, it's not a, it is a vitamin, but it, it is more complicated than some of the other vitamins are, or that we know about yet, because the body is complicated. So vitamin D levels are good. We want good vitamin D levels, but going to excess, and you'll feel bad if you go to excess. Um, that often means the calcium is not there, which indicates a linoleic, a fatty acid deficiency. So eat some more fatty acids. That usually takes care of it. Um, I'm not sure exactly how. I have not figured out the, the physiology of it. But taking enough vitamin F and keeping the calcium in the tissue seems to prevent sunburn. Not just sun sickness, but actually sunburn. So it's very, very interesting. I'm not sure how it works. I've never read anything about it, but Dr. Royalty recommends it, which means he knew how. I just haven't read what he says about it. I haven't found it. Um, or he didn't know, but he just observed. And I personally have observed in myself, in patients, and in other friends um, that taking enough vitamin F and doing enough um, fat, both are preventative to getting sunburned, even with long sun exposure. So it's not a guarantee, uh, but it, it definitely is helpful. So it's pretty cool. All right. Um, detoxing. So the sun helps to detox. So we talked about one way already. That's the exclusion zone structuring of the water in our body and in our cells that has the cells dump out toxins into the bloodstream, which is probably the other reason why you feel sun sick sometimes if you spend too long in the sun is because your body detoxed, right? Um, so we have that. We also have vitamin D coming into the immune system, which helps boost the immune system and do the work that it wants to do. We have antioxidants like melatonin that are in a proper cycle of sunlight exposure and darkness exposure. Um, so where there is one, there's a balance, right? So it's not just sun exposure. Um, it's also a darkness exposure that really helps us to be in the balanced rhythm of our lives. Um, detoxing. Nope, that's all I have to say about detoxing. We talked about it a lot with the structured water. I believe that's the main reason, both that the cells get energized by the radiant energy of the sun, as well as the structuring of water. I think that's the main reasons why it's detoxing. Um, they're 
probably are other reasons, but not that I have studied or heard of. Um, I'm sure there are, but that's what I know. So again, there's another level you can dive into if you'd like to. Type thing number five, mood. And let's just for fun um, loop opiate production in there. Um, I think I can. I'm going to look at this. Um, I'm going to read what this doctor, sorry, it's a K. This article that I'm going to link to you had a lot of good sum ups um, besides these books, but some of the other things, they were really cool. Okay. Endocrine effect. There's a reduction in stress and anxiety. Um, this is because of the production of, of endorphins in the body, probably. And then anytime your body is not hurting from toxins, <laughs> when it's cleaner, it's happier. It just can be. The neurotransmitters are more free to sit on the receptor sites that tell you to rest and be peaceful and to be happy. Um, so that is good. Um, Dr. Cruz, K R U. K-R-U-S-E. Um, Dr. Jack Cruz is a neurosurgeon and CEO of something that they're quoting. Um, he said in a 2017 article, quote, sunlight releases an opiate, um, a beta endorphin, when we are exposed to the sun. Um, <laughs> guess why nature did that? Could it be that she wanted us going into the sunlight often for its healing powers? It turns out that the combination of ultraviolet and infrared solar light, humans are designed to get in the morning um, and also pre-treats the skin to lower inflammation, which I have just recently heard about. So cool. Um, they say to help your body deal with the UV strength of the afternoon, you need to get exposed to the sun in the morning. And the morning sunlight exposure will actually help you deal with the afternoon sunlight exposure better. The fact that you, back to the quote, the fact that UV light induces a small opiate response tells me nature is trying to get us to come out into the solar light in the morning. So I'm not sure, it, it doesn't say in this quote, and I didn't have time to read the full article, but it's linked in this article. Um, but uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. I've been hearing a lot about this morning exposure, which is really interesting because didn't we learn to get exposure during the UV exposure in that afternoon if we wanted the, the highest vitamin D levels? There's a few things that I've not, um, well, number one, a lot of people can't tolerate that. It's too strong and intensive an action. Number two, historically, if we were in the sun, we would be in the sun when it made sense. We wouldn't go in the middle of the day when it's super hot. We'd be in the shade then. We'd be out in the morning and in the evening. Um, so it would make sense that we, like that, that just makes sense. Why would it not make sense um, to do what makes sense? Um, so morning sunlight um, and then people who work all day are going to start in the morning as early as possible to get as much work in and to get as much work in before it gets hot, right? So um, having that that pattern that our body um, works with well um, is gonna is gonna make sense. So it made a lot of sense to me when I started hearing about morning sunlight, not just the hottest part of the day sunlight. I just I don't think God would make a place where we would have to be in a place of risk of getting burned and skin cancer only. Um, as the only time to get the UV that's so helpful to our bodies and our health. So it made a lot of sense when I started finding things that talk about morning sunlight and how beneficial that is. So I do think that that's really good. Um, getting up first thing in the morning um, when the sun is there before you go out is going to help you start your day well. It's going to help your mood, your stress levels. It's going to start you with an opiate boost, which is great. That's a great way to start looking as a positive outlook for the day. Um, so that is all um, so helpful, so encouraging. Um, now, with all of those amazing things that sunlight do, and again, I just scratched the surface in the last half hour, but what, let's talk about just for a minute, the, the way to do this practically. So number one, sunlight early. Um, if you're going to be out all day, start in the morning and then be out all day. Don't start in the afternoon and be out all evening if possible. Um even through clothes, you're going to have some effect from the sun. So in winter, don't walk on a treadmill, go outside. You will have some exposure because you can't cover your mouth. You have to breathe. Um, you are going to get it hopefully through your hands. You know, if, if you're not in a place where it's 20 below, um, 
you know, here in Colorado, it's very rare that I actually couldn't walk outside without a jacket on. Um, I could have a jacket on. It could be a light jacket. I walk fast for 15 minutes and I'm going to be fine. Right? Not going to be able to sit that long, but I'm going to be able to walk 50, 50 weeks out of the year. Um, that's going to be a possibility. So um, being out in the sun anyway with whatever amount you have. Maybe natural fibers ha plays an effect there. Number two, don't wear sunglasses. This is not a very popular PC um, suggestion right now, but the reason why um, we wear sunglasses is because many of us are vitamin A deficient. Vitamin A deficiency makes your eyes weak and it hurts to see bright sunlight. Now, if you are in a place where you your eyes are weaker, um, number one, you need to take cod liver oil, which has vitamin F in it anyway, so win-win. Um, number two, you need to work your eyes up to being okay. So on maybe gloomy days, don't wear sunglasses. Try not not wear them unless you're out. Now, if you are in a place where you're on the water or the snow and it's reflective, you can go blind. Please wear your sunglasses. That is a proper and correct time to do that. Um, but on normal running around town, um, especially walking or being outside, being outside in the shade. Um, try to work yourself off of sunglasses. This is going to be really helpful both for your emotional and mental health, as well as the physical health and ultimately the physical health of your eyes. It will prevent cancerous cells and, and dysmorphed cells um, from reproducing, and it will allow that um, that detoxification, the melatonin, apoptosis, cell death of unhealthy cells, all of that is going to work um, and happen when direct sunlight goes into your eyes, not staring at the sun, just being able to be exposed to that without a UV blocking. The UV blocking is one part of it, but the sunlight itself um, is another part. So it's not just about by UV free blocking, which you probably can't get anymore. Um, the UV blocking is one thing, but <clears throat> you still also just want unhindered sunlight in your eyes. Just like you want unhindered sunlight on your skin. While there is a lot of benefit, um, we do know that the vitamin D production comes from direct skin exposure to the UV rays of the sun. So our vitamin D production is dependent on that. And as much skin is exposed as possible, um, depending on the darkness of your skin, I've been able to be out a lot more than I have for years um, gardening, which is great. So my skin is quite dark for me. It's going to take a little longer for me to get sun exposure there than it is for me to get on my legs or how white I am without sun exposure. <clears throat> when you are looking at sun exposure, there's a lot of things in play. Number one, does that sun organize your cells and give you a boost of energy? Well, that's great. Number two, does that boost of energy and cell organization, water organization, um, push out a whole bunch of toxins into your bloodstream? Then you're going to feel like not very good. Um, so limit your sun exposure, not just for getting burned, but also how is the detoxing happening in your body? Keep an eye on that. You may be able to dilute it out with water and stay out a little longer, but you may not. You may actually need to start with five minutes for um, a week or two or three, and then you can do 10 minutes um, because you're not able to handle the amount of detoxing that that direct sunlight is doing. You can also do other things like detox baths, oil pulling, juicing, you know, enemas, all that kind of thing to help pull toxins out faster, or especially if you feel poorly. Um, 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 um. Uh, we talked about watch the sunrise and the sunset, especially if you are, are having circadian mood, depression, anxiety symptoms, um, hormone imbalances, because all hormones affect other hormones. So everything from blood sugar, female and male hormone, um, adrenal hormone, thyroid hormone, brain hormones, neurotransmitters, they're all going to be affected in some degree by um, your melatonin cortisol circadian rhythm cycle. So go ahead and look at that. Um, okay, and then bare skin exposure, how to safely is what I wrote in my note. We talked about one thing, limit the length of time, put on clothing otherwise. That's the best way to protect your skin without adding any chemicals to it. There are a lot of SPFs 
coconut oil has an SPF of like eight. Um, carrot seed oil has like 15 or 18. So when we look at SPFs, we can combine different herbs, um, oils, things like that into a powder. Zinc oxide is going to be another one. So those are going to be what we want to do to put together a natural sunscreen. There are natural sunscreens available now because there's cool people in the world. <laughs> so you can buy one. Um, you, if you go to zinc oxide, you want to make sure you get the, I believe it's the nanoparticles of zinc so that it um, it doesn't absorb into your skin, prep, uh, skin, which can be a problem. Do, 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 do. If you are only out for a short period of time, try not to wear sunscreen because then you just, your body gets the full benefit even through your clothing fibers of that UV radi radiation, which can help with all of the health things we just discussed. If you are out for a long period of time, longer than you know your skin is ready for, number one, seek shade and wear layers as much as possible. It actually keeps you cooler to have a layer, a light cotton layer on your skin um, than to be fully exposed to the sun. Uh, so that shade from your clothes will outweigh the, the trapped heat, especially if it's not a synthetic plastic shirt like I have on. You want a natural fiber. Um, if you feel like you are going to be out too long and you can't find the shade, you're going to be boating, beaching, whatever, find a natural form of sunscreen. It is good to not damage your cells if possible because they get hurt and it's work for your body. If your cells get damaged, your immune system should clean them up and make them good. Um, if you do have certain spots um, that don't heal quite properly, pay attention to those. Um, I have a spot from a really, really bad sunburn on my knee and I watch it. Um, I make sure that it's not changing um, the mole there is not changing um, or doing anything funky. And there are different essential oils like frankincense that initiate apoptosis also that you could put on a spot that you're worried about every day for, you know, maybe a month and see, does there any kind of blistering or um, scabbing effect, which means the body is killing bad cells and getting them out of there. So that would be good. So just there's ways to do that. Um, if you are having a lot of sun exposure and your skin is taking a lot of damage and not repairing well, you do want to be watching. However, um, when we started studying uh, sunscreen and skin cancer, um, a huge study was done in Australia about skin cancer incidences. And the skin cancer incidences went up extremely much um, when we started using sunscreen, when they started using sunscreen. So very interesting, there was an increase, a clear dramatic increase in skin cancer incidences um, with the use of sunscreen as opposed to without. So what's happening there? My theories are twofold. One, there's toxins that you put on the skin that are damaging cells more than the sun ever could. Number two, you are hindering the immune activity and the detoxification by blocking the sun's effect in your skin, which ultimately leads to more damage to your skin and eye and cells. So that's what I think. The more science I read, the more confirms that. That's what I think is going on there. Okay. Um, and then just to, you know, watch, watch your things. Watch your moles. Uh, make sure nothing's changing. Um, you know, go get any kind of funky stuff checked out. Don't be unwise. Don't get burned over and over and over. I'm not saying go burn your skin all the time. You're going to be fine. I'm saying unexposed skin is good, but do it responsibly, safely work up to what you need to do. The darker your skin pigment color, whether tanned or, you know, ethnic heritage, you need to get more sunlight because it takes more for the vitamin D production um, it takes more exposure for vitamin D production specifically, um, and probably some other things to work. Um, so we do need, we do need vitamin D. It's not a bad thing. It just needs to be in balance like everything else. Um, so we need vitamin D. It is more difficult to get vitamin D the darker your skin melanin concentration is, right? Um, so you want to make sure you're doing that. Okay. Um, I will, if I can easily find it, I will link the homemade skin sunscreen recipe that I have used, uh, which worked well for me on a rafting trip, except when I forgot to put it on. It's weird how that works. Um, I'm going to link this article that this cool chart come from, came from, and then I'll write down the title of these two books that I talked about today. 
So if you have any questions, let me know in the live chat or you can comment below after um, and I will answer them. Thanks for being here and watching today. I appreciate you guys listening to me just present what I've learned. Uh, I love the, I love diving deep into these topics where you realize you could do a lifetime of study in these things. And yet we get the benefit of using them. You don't have to have your PhD in physics to um, be able to get benefit from sunbathing. So hopefully this was really helpful and informative to you. Um, a little shorter, 45 minutes. I tried to go quicker. If you want to support our educational endeavors, you, know, you can go to bewellclinic.net slash um, events, and then you can do a donate button and put in any amount to donate to us um, being able to continue to teach um, and just support what we're doing in the teaching realm. Um, so we appreciate that. Thank you to all who have donated um, over time. And um, that is all for this week. And we will see you next week for another Learn On Live. <laughs> have a good night, everyone. <laughs>